Welcome back to your channel, The Big Reset Investment. In today's video, we're going to delve into the insightful perspectives of Michael Saylor on trading and investment strategies. We'll explore why trading may not always be the best route for the majority, the power of holding on to desirable assets, particularly Bitcoin, and the external factors that affect Bitcoin's cycle. We'll also discuss the potential impact of federal monetary policies. Remember this isn't financial advice, just sharing insights. Stay tuned as we unpack these topics one by one. First, let's address the elephant in the room, trading. It's a term that sends a thrill down the spine of many, conjuring images of Wall Street wizards and spectacular profits. But let's take a moment to explore the wisdom of Michael Saylor on this subject. According to Saylor, trading isn't for everyone. In fact, it's a high-risk venture, best left to the professionals. Picture this. You're in a stadium packed with 100,000 people. Now imagine that only 1,000 of those people will come out ahead in their trades. That's right, a mere 1%. It's a sobering thought, isn't it? Saylor stresses that nearly 99% of traders lose trades. It's not due to a lack of effort or intelligence, but rather the unpredictability and volatility inherent in the market. The world of trading is a tumultuous ocean, and even the most seasoned sailors can find themselves capsized by an unexpected wave. So why do so many dabble in trading? Well, the allure of quick, sizable profits can be hard to resist. But let's remember the promise of fast returns is often accompanied by high risks. And more often than not, the risks outweigh the potential rewards. As Saylor points out, trading is meant for that 1% who are professional and have the means. The professionals have the knowledge, the experience, and most importantly, the resources to weather the storm. For the rest of us, well, it's a bit like playing with fire. So, if trading is a perilous path, what's the alternative? Well, Sailor has a suggestion. It's simple, it's proven, and it's surprisingly accessible. But to find out what it is, you'll have to stick around. Let's find out. Now, let's turn our attention to a strategy that Michael Saylor advocates for, long-term investment. Long-term investment is like a marathon, not a sprint. It requires patience, discipline, and a strong belief in the value of the assets you are investing in. It's about buying and holding on to assets that are desirable, that have a potential for growth over an extended period. Take Bitcoin for instance. To many Bitcoin is more than just a digital currency. It's a technological innovation, a store of value, a hedge against inflation, it's a desirable asset. But why is it so? One of the key reasons is scarcity. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. When demand increases and supply remains fixed, the price is bound to rise. This is basic economics. But let's not forget, the journey of Bitcoin hasn't always been smooth. There have been periods of wild price swings, euphoria followed by despair. But if you look at the bigger picture, the long-term trend, the value of Bitcoin has been on an upward trajectory. Those who bought Bitcoin early and held on, ignoring the short-term volatility, are now reaping the benefits. These investors didn't panic sell when the price dropped, instead, they held their ground, trusting in the long-term potential of Bitcoin. This is the power of long-term investment, but let's be clear. Long-term investment is not about blind faith. It's about informed decision-making. It's about understanding the asset you are investing in, its potential for growth, and the risks involved. It's about diversifying your investment portfolio to spread the risk. In the world of investment, there's a saying, time in the market is more important than timing the market. This is the essence of long-term investment. It's not about trying to predict the market's short-term movements, it's about investing in assets that have a potential for growth over the long term, and then having the patience to let that growth happen. But how does Bitcoin in particular play into this strategy? Let's uncover this next. Bitcoin, according to Michael Saylor, is one of the most desirable assets for long-term holding. But why? What makes this digital currency so special? Well, let's dive in and see. Firstly, Bitcoin's scarcity. There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoins in existence, no more. This finite supply, much like gold or diamonds, is what makes Bitcoin valuable and desirable. Secondly, Bitcoin is decentralized. It's not controlled by any government or financial institution, making it immune to inflation and other economic manipulations. This freedom from external control makes Bitcoin a safe haven for many investors, especially during times of economic instability. Now let's talk about the dump and pump. This is a market manipulation tactic often seen in cryptocurrencies where the price is artificially inflated, attracting investors, and then suddenly sold off, causing a sharp drop in value. This can be frightening, especially for new investors. But Saylor suggests ignoring these fluctuations. Why? 
Because Bitcoin, like any other asset, has its ups and downs. It's part of the game. When you focus on the long-term, short-term volatility becomes less significant. It's about having faith in the asset's inherent value and potential for growth over time. The key here is to avoid panic selling. When prices drop, some investors may feel compelled to sell their assets to avoid further losses. But, this is where the savvy investor stands firm. Remember the market is cyclical. What goes down will eventually go up. Saylor emphasizes that holding on to Bitcoin, even during market dips, is the best way to maximize profits over time. It's a strategy of patience, endurance and confidence in the asset's long-term trajectory. But what happens when external factors come into play? We're about to explore that. Bitcoin's cycle is influenced by a myriad of external factors. Like the ebb and flow of an ocean tide, Bitcoin's cycle is subject to a wide array of influences that shape its trajectory and value. It's not a random roller coaster ride but a complex interplay of various dynamics. One of these influential factors is awareness. As more people become cognizant of Bitcoin, its demand increases. This heightened awareness, streamlined by the ubiquity of digital technology and social media, has a direct impact on Bitcoin's value. The more people understand and trust Bitcoin, the more they are willing to invest, which drives its price upward. Another key dynamic is halving, a feature programmed into Bitcoin's code to reduce the production of new Bitcoins by 50% every four years. This event, known as halving, creates a kind of artificial scarcity, generating hype that often leads to price surges. It's like a clockwork mechanism that ensures the supply of Bitcoin decreases over time, making it more valuable in the eyes of investors. Wars and geopolitical instability also play a significant role. During times of uncertainty, traditional assets may falter, and investors may seek refuge in alternative assets like Bitcoin. As a decentralized and global currency, Bitcoin is often perceived as a safe haven, a digital gold that can withstand the tumults of the world stage. Then there's the influence of big tech. When industry giants like Apple and Microsoft show interest in or endorse Bitcoin, it validates the asset and sparks investor confidence. These endorsements often translate into price hikes, further propelling Bitcoin's cycle. Panic also feeds into the cycle. Fear of missing out, or FOMO, can lead to rapid buying, inflating the price. Conversely, fear of losing everything can trigger panic selling, causing the price to plummet. It's a psychological tug of war that plays out on the trading floor. Finally, we have hyperinflation. When a country's currency loses its value rapidly, people often turn to Bitcoin as a store of value, a hedge against their plummeting national currency. This boosts demand for Bitcoin, driving its price upward. So, you see, the cycle of Bitcoin isn't just a random sequence of peaks and troughs. It's a manifestation of various dynamics, from technological advancements to human psychology, from geopolitical events to economic policies. Each factor contributes to the long-term value of this digital asset, shaping its cycle, influencing its price, and determining its future. And what about the role of federal monetary policies? Let's delve into that. The dance of Bitcoin continues, and it's a fascinating spectacle to behold. As we pull back the curtains on these external influences, we gain a deeper understanding of the intricate world of Bitcoin. And in that understanding lies the key to unlocking its potential. Federal monetary policies, particularly money printing, can significantly impact the market. Michael Saylor, a renowned investor and Bitcoin advocate, has some interesting insights on this. He believes that the Federal Reserve's response to international crises, such as wars, often involves an increase in the production of money. This isn't just about printing physical notes, it's about increasing the overall money supply. Now, you might be wondering, why would the government want to print more money during times of crisis? Well, it's a method to stimulate the economy. More money in circulation means more spending, which in turn can boost economic growth. However, there's a flip side. When the supply of money increases rapidly, it can lead to inflation, meaning the purchasing power of a single unit of currency decreases. Now let's connect this to Bitcoin. Bitcoin was designed with a limited supply. Unlike traditional currencies, you can't just decide to create more Bitcoin when the need arises. This scarcity is one of the factors that gives Bitcoin its value. So, when the value of traditional currencies decreases due to inflation, the value of Bitcoin in contrast could potentially soar. Saylor suggests that this is an opportunity for investors. As the Federal Reserve increases the money supply, the market could inflate, 
and the value of Bitcoin could rise correspondingly. This isn't a short-term prediction, but a long-term potential outcome based on the fundamental principles of supply and demand. It's important to note, however, that this isn't a guaranteed outcome. Like all investments, Bitcoin comes with its own set of risks. Market fluctuations, regulatory changes, and technological vulnerabilities are just a few examples. So, while Bitcoin's potential to increase in value during times of inflation is an exciting prospect, it's crucial to approach it with a clear understanding of the risks involved. So, what does all this mean for you as an investor? Well, if sailors' predictions hold true, and you're prepared to navigate the risks, holding Bitcoin could potentially offer a hedge against inflation. This could be particularly beneficial in a climate where traditional currencies are losing value due to increased money supply. As always, it's essential to do your own research and consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. As we've seen, Michael Saylor's insights provide valuable guidance for anyone navigating the investment landscape. His wisdom is a beacon, throwing light on the often murky waters of financial investment, particularly in the world of cryptocurrencies. Let's take a moment to revisit the key takeaways from our journey today. First, we talked about the perils of trading. As Saylor points out, nearly 99% of traders lose their trades. Trading, he suggests, is a game best played by the 1% who are professionals and have the means to withstand the inherent risks. For the rest of us, the game is fraught with hazards. So, what's the alternative? Saylor champions the power of long-term investment. It's not about quick wins or short-term gains but about patience and resilience. The strategy here is simple, yet effective. Buy the most desirable assets and hold on to them for an extended period. Let others panic sell while you stay the course. And when we talk about desirable assets, Bitcoin stands out. Holding Bitcoin, according to Saylor, is an excellent way to maximize profits over time. It's about ignoring the dump and pump, about not getting scared into selling to big investors. It's about having faith in the asset and its potential. But Bitcoin doesn't exist in a vacuum. Its cycle is influenced by a myriad of external factors, from awareness to having, from wars to big tech companies, and from panic to hyperinflation. Understanding these influences and how they drive Bitcoin's cycle is crucial to making informed decisions. And then there's the role of the federal monetary policies. The Federal Reserve, in response to situations like wars, prints more money, which invariably leads to market inflation. And when the market inflates, Bitcoin soars. It's a cycle, a rhythm that every investor should be aware of. But let's not forget the crucial disclaimer. This video is not a substitute for professional financial advice. It's meant to stimulate thought, to encourage you to do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Remember, an informed investor is a successful investor. And with that, we've come to the end of our journey. We've explored Michael Saylor's insights, delved into the world of Bitcoin, and hopefully given you some food for thought. Whether you're an experienced investor or just starting out, understanding the landscape and making informed decisions is key. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Remember, investment decisions should always be based on careful consideration and due diligence. Until next time, stay savvy, stay invested.